Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, This is good. This is like two more information you want to know, but I took a class at Vine yesterday. It was different. And the instructor was like, you're going to be cursing me tomorrow. I am. So uh, it's your, anyway, it's muscles that, uh, so if I look like I'm limping around or can't get up and down, it's because of this exercise class I took, so. Welcome to those of you joining us on Facebook. It is always nice to have you. I was just visiting with a couple folks who are here in person instead of online, but we are always thrilled that 
those of you who join us in that capacity do so. So uh, thanks. Please feel free to say hi to one another as well so you know who is worshiping with you from afar. And uh, happy to have you. We will be celebrating communion again a little bit later. Uh, probably the big announcement is next week, hopefully summer will return. And uh, we're scheduled to go outside, although my um, weather report did say it was going to be a beautiful day next Sunday. And then I think last night it said there's a chance of rain. Who knows? No matter what, it'll be one worship service, Messiah Worships United, at 10 a.m. And if the weather allows, we'll go outside for that. So that's what we'll be doing next Sunday. And then the rest of the announcements are there for you. A couple of things coming up this summer that we need volunteers for. So pay attention to that and feel free to sign up as your schedule permits. And then I brought back my uh, little trivia for a few more questions today. Are you ready? Somebody who lives in lower North Mankato. A lot of you live in upper, but there are several who live in lower. Anybody here? Mm -hmm. Stafford, Brandon, and Missy. Excellent. There's some more, too. Uh, Helps with screens or live streaming on a Sunday morning. Turn around. There they all are. Caleb is supervising today. Right, Caleb? Yeah, yeah. Bob is our 1030 screen operator. And uh, uh, Ryan gets to do double duty. He helps with sound at 830 and plays the drums at 1030. So we're grateful for that. All right, I know there's a few of you here. A current or retired public sector employee. County, state, teachers. Did you see those? Yep, and there are, some of them are waving to one another, right? <laughs> So we have a fair number of folks in that regard. Yep, yep. Gosh, a fairly significant percentage here, I think. One, he's out working right now. Two, three, you know, I bet 10% at least. So a part of a multi-generational family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The Hanson True family, um, the Stocks and the Sutters. Or the two that came to mind, I think we have a couple more, too. Um, the Manx, and I'm, I'm sure there are more, and I'm just not thinking of them off the top of my head. That's wonderful as well. A pastor always learns uh, when they are coming into a new church, never assume anything. Because as you go along, all of a sudden you'll be surprised at who is related to who in a church. So never assume anything. Um, kids who play softball or baseball. Caleb, are you playing baseball? Yes, and Caleb also just did state bowling, I remember. Correct? Yes. Excellent, excellent. You play baseball, Brandon? Oh, last year. Last year you did? All right. Uh, there's, there's probably lots of kids that are playing that, especially with summer league. Uh, helps take care of the gardening or the mowing? Sarah's one. Missy's doing that. Archie does that. Karna, of course, is in charge. So... Um, there may even be, I, don't, I should have looked, there's probably a list of who to contact with some of those kinds of things. And if you're interested in helping with either one, I know they would always take more help. And uh, belongs to or is a leader for scouts. Are you in scouts, Brandon? No. Caleb and Greg are. Usually Timothy is here and he is one. And the Carroll family, they're a big scout family, so we've got some as well. Um, so... Another way to get to know folks a little bit. I invite you to stand as you are able, and let's begin worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin, and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God. Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender to parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above the earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life 
through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who covers us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. We continue with our gathering song. to God. 
your tree of life. Nourish us with your word that empowered by your spirit we may love one another and the world you have made through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading today is from Acts chapter 16, verses 9 through 15, and you can find that in your New Testament on page 136. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to him. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you had judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Now we will read uh, Psalm 67 responsively. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let the people praise you, all God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let, the pap- let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe.
Gospel is from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. And because I live, you will live too. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father. You are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, asked, Lord, why are you about to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, whoever loves me will keep my word. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever doesn't love me doesn't keep my words. The word that you hear isn't mine. It is the word of the father who sent me. I have spoken these things to you while I am with you. The companion, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I give to you not as the world gives. Don't be troubled or afraid. You have heard me tell you I am going away and returning to you. If you loved me, you would be happy that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than me. I have told you before it happens so that when it happens, you will believe. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. You want to come up, Brandon? I got a couple things in a basket. It's still the Easter season, so I pulled out the Easter basket to put them in. So they had to be little enough to fit in my basket. And I want to know if you know what some of these things are. Actually, some of them you might know. Some of them probably won't, which is okay. But they all have something in common. What is that? I'm impressed. You use that to find like little chips of wood in the wall that you don't really Yes, find it's a stud finder to find those pieces of wood in the wall. I'm super impressed. Did your dad teach you that? Well, yeah. Good for him. Yep, I got a measuring tape to measure. Yep, I got a big old paper clip here. Yep, hold everything together. Well, these things Both of these are like help you open a jar that's stuck. This one just to get a better grip on something. And then this one, it would be like a bottle of some kind. You would put it on there, get some extra leverage. And then this, your mom has to do a little work because this is like a pot scrubber. Teach you how to wash the dishes, right? Or do you already know how? And she saves the pots and pans for somebody else. Yeah. Oh, you had a dishwasher. Well, then you don't need one of those. That works. That's even better. That's even better. So all of those things, what they all do, can you figure out what they all do or what they might have in common? They all help us do something, right? Either scrub a pot, help you get a cleaner, or help you find the wood, or help you open a jar, or keep your paint. So they're all helpers. And what Jesus was just saying in the gospel reading is I'm going to send you a helper, that he gave us a helper. And our helper is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can do lots of different things, but that's one of the things that we think of when we think of the Spirit. Another way to think about a helper is like a coach. You said you took baseball last summer, so you know what a coach does. Help you do something better, help make it a little easier for you, give you a new idea, all those kinds of things is what God the Spirit does for us, walks with us and helps us get through hard times, shows us something, helps us learn. We even say in some of the things we do, we wouldn't be able to know God without the help of the Spirit. God kind of opens us, Spirit opens our hearts so we can hear God and learn and all those kinds of things. Make sense? All right. I'm going to let you pray with me, and we're just going to say thanks for the Spirit, all right? Dear God, thank you for the gift of the Spirit. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Sunday school is done for the year. Last year was our last one. Isn't that a bummer? But vacation Bible school in June, if you're interested in that. So the world is a mess these days. Would you agree? Yeah. 
lots of ugly stuff that keeps going on. Anger, hatred, violence, division, strife, all those kinds of things. And so we ask ourselves, why? Why is the world so ugly? Ugly? Well, we often understand that underneath things like hatred and anger and division and everything else, underneath all of that is the fact that we're all scared. We are a frightened and fearful people. And so the things that we see are really just symptoms of that underlying fear that we all have. And so what is it that we are afraid of? If we take a cue from what Jesus was telling his disciples in this farewell discourse that we just heard a few moments ago, one of the things we might be afraid of is being afraid of being alone, being afraid of being left. So what does it mean to be alone? When we are alone, we believe that we can't depend on anybody else. Sound familiar? Nobody else is going to have your back. Nobody else is going to take care of you. So you have to put your own needs and wants first and foremost because nobody else is going to do that for you. Being alone means nobody cares about you. Nobody is there for you. You are alone. And how ironic is it that in the midst of a society where we are now connected 24-7 online to people all over the world, our rates of anxiety and other mental health concerns are at an all-time high, especially among our young people, our most connected generation. That's the wrong kind of connection. And instead of fostering connection, it fosters our feelings of aloneness and isolation. Of course, feeling like we were all alone, are all alone, has of course been made worse by a pandemic that required us to isolate ourselves for our own safety and for the safety of others. COVID is still with us, of course, and so that required isolation is still there, that quarantining that we still need to do for ourselves and for one another. And that exacerbates our feeling, our fear of being alone. But it's also been made worse by our politicians who tell us we're supposed to be scared. We're supposed to be fearful of unknown forces that are out to get us in some way. We're supposed to be fearful of the other, whether the other is terrorism or, or immigrants or people of another class or culture or race or even people of a different political party. Well-known theologian Walter Brueggemann says that our anxiety is made worse because, quote, we are dwarfed by huge concentrations of power and wealth and are helpless before them. And we are minimized by technological capacities and electronic advances that seem to rob us of initiative in our own lives. As a result, he says, the reason that there is such craziness, such a binge of fear and hate, such a propensity to brutality and violence and terror and counter-terror is that people are anxious down to the very bottom of their lives. And we also might feel alone for reasons that are much simpler. Perhaps we are alone because we have lost the one that we loved. Or we've lost friends because they have moved or disconnected themselves. Or we feel alone because of that natural isolation that sometimes comes with aging or the need to be a caregiver. Or we're alone because we are getting ready to leave home. Or we're watching a sibling or a friend leave the community or their home. Or we're dealing with an illness or our own mental health fragility, or a job upheaval at work, or a life experience of some kind that is unique to us, and we simply can't share it with others or have decided we don't want to share it with others. And so we feel alone. And we become fearful. And fearfulness leads to the mess that we are in. But Jesus has an answer. Peace. He says, I give you my peace. 
He says to us, you are not alone, and I have proof of that. I'm going to send the Spirit, a helper, a companion, a coach, God, who is going to be by your side at all times. He tells his disciples, I am going away, no longer able to physically see me, but you will never be alone. That was the promise that he made to his disciples, and it is the promise that he has made to each of us. That promise is still true today, but how easy it is for us to forget that promise. The good news is that when we open ourselves up to the work of the Spirit, the promise returns to us. Often it happens when we reach the end of our own strength or initiative or work, when we find out that we cannot rely on just ourselves any longer. Suddenly, when we come to the end of that rope, God is waiting for us. God is there in the midst of great difficulty that we must face. For better or worse, my own experience of having a deep abiding peace is that it's not something you can go out and find and grasp and cling to. It's something that comes to you both when the Spirit is choosing to make it apparent to you and your heart is ready and open to receive it. I saw it happen again this past week. I was visiting with someone who has recently made the decision to stop all medical treatments and move on to hospice. He was clearly at peace with this decision and looking forward to the gift of the remaining days ahead of him. It was apparent to me that the work of the Spirit was alive and well in him. There's also a communal peace that we can receive. Although we do have to say that given the state of the world today, we probably have a long ways to go before we can once again share in this communal peace. But that is what we all hope for, and it's what we work for. In fact, it is the responsibility of the church itself to bring the peace of Christ to the world. This peace is ours to have, and it's also ours to share. And the responsibility lies with the church. We get to be the non-anxious presence for the world around us. Again, here's what Walter Brueggemann says. While this deep anxiety causes the world to divide into us and them, into good guys and bad guys, and then imagine we are good and right and pure and righteous all because of anxiety, that is not so with the faithful church. And the reason? The reason is that we Christians are not like our society. The reason is we are unanxious in an anxious society. Why? Because we have the peace of Christ in us, among us, above, below, before, behind, all around us. Brueggemann goes on and says, Take deep notice of the ways in which we are different because of the truth of the gospel and the truth of God's Easter victory over all that threatens our lives and our world. This is what the word evangelical means, that we trust ourselves to the truth of the gospel. The peace of Jesus, the gift of the Spirit, gives us this ability to be the non anxious presence for the world. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have some fear and anxiety of our own, because those are, of course, natural responses. But we don't allow our fear or anxiety to overwhelm us. We learn how to remain calm through the work of the Spirit trusting in the will and goodness of God, so that in the words of Julian of Norwich, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things will be well. Not well as in perfect, or not well as in exactly how we want it to be, but well as in no matter what, our souls are well with God. This is the refrain of one of my very favorite songs. It's a song that has often carried me on the days when my own anxiety threatened. If you don't know the story behind this song, it was written by Horatio Stafford in 1871. 
After suffering the loss of his fortune in the great Chicago fire and the death of his four-year-old son, he decided a vacation would be good for his family. So he sent his wife and four daughters on ahead, planning to join them in England when he was done with his business. The ship his family was on suffered a terrible collision, and it sunk, taking over 200 lives, including all four of his children. As he sailed to meet his wife in England, the captain of the ship let him know when they were passing over the spot where that shipwreck had occurred. And as he experienced the peace of Christ in those moments, he wrote the words to the song that we are now going to sing. As we sing, may we too receive the gift of the peace of Christ. Amen. his name wrong. I spelled his name wrong probably to come on up and join me. We are welcoming uh, next week new members into our midst, but Dan is unable to join us next week and agreed 
to come and let us welcome him here at this worship today. I know he is a familiar face to many of you. He is a regular 830 worshiper. He's joining us as an associate member, and we are pleased to have him with us. Um, I didn't get you a microphone or even ask you this. Anything you want to tell us? Yeah, well, it must have been almost a year because you began last summer, right? Right. Excellent. Thank you. So, dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for this person, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as a new member into the life and ministry of this congregation. I invite you to stand as you are able, and together let us all confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. So Dan, as a brother in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? A people of God. Do you promise to support and pray for Dan in his life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us welcome this brother in Christ to this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. And please show a sign of your welcome to Dan. Thank you very much. Please, you may be seated, and please uh, welcome Dan after worship as well. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected where your spirit is at work. Guide us in partnerships and plans and surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give safe haven to those who seek healing and peace. Today we pray especially for Ben, Craig, Dave, Earl, and Judy, Milt, Dolores, Sharon, Dan, and Millie, Ellie and Arthur, Gary, Sally, Wanda, and Jordan, Lois, Bob, Jerry, Pam, Suzanne, Tom, and others we now name in our hearts. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ to be with you all. I invite you to uh, share a sign of peace with one another as we receive our offering.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broken and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The meal is ready and all are welcome at the table. The ushers will direct you forward.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. God, the source of glory, God, the word of life, God, the spirit of truth, bless you all now and forever. Amen. We continue with our sending song. Thanks be to God.